Yo, 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 what is up, what is up, what is up, guys? I hope everybody is having a fantastic, beautiful Monday. Wait, what to, what's today? Sunday? It's Sunday, right? Jesus. I'm getting my days mixed up. I don't know why. I'm just getting my days mixed up. Um, so, 14th day of free agency, obviously. We've been through two weeks of free agency. I think the Eagles have made some really good moves. I think Howie Roseman, when it comes to, when it comes to cap hits... As of right now, with all these standing teams with Howie Roseman, the cap hits for 2024 for players signed, Howie Roseman is ranked 22nd in the league in cap hits, which is Jesus, which is great, <laughs> which is which is really good, man. That means he knows how to move money around and knows he knows how to sign guys and how to you know move some of the cap situations around. So that's great, you know. Um, made a video about Hassan Reddick. Obviously, obviously, all the new news that came out on the report the other day that me and Philly talked about last night. Um, and it seems like, you know, there's a lot of people that were like, man, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, I, I of course, like I knew people are going to agree with me on things. I get it. Um, some people think we're in a rebuilding type of year, which I think is a bunch of BS as well. Um, you know, but I think there's so much more that we're going to do. I mean, I feel like we're still waiting. Another day has gone by. No safety in Julian Julian Blackman. No um Justin Simmons so far. And um this Reddick thing, uh, we're just going to be on a waiting thing for it. Now, it doesn't matter what the million dollars they have to pay for the roster bonus. So, you know, this trade for Reddick could happen between now he could get, he get trade on the draft trade on the draft and then maybe after and you know then post draft so it's a little annoying this waiting game i mean if this thing lasts that long i'm just saying unless they get together with a team and say hey we'd like to do a draft day trade or something i don't know and get something done um so we'll see how it goes the way it goes um, you know, you know, we'll see. So let me put the stream. Hold on one second. Let me just put this on my phone real quick. Uh, I'm all, I'm all over the place today. I'm all over the place today. Oh my God. This is so annoying. <sighs> All right, cool. Chat is up. Chat is up. So we're going to go for like an hour or two. You know, nothing crazy today. Um, Got to put some more content out later on and some other stuff. Uh, but, you know, I think there's obviously a lot to talk about regarding, you know, if this trade is going to go down or not. Um, you know, and it bothers the shit out of me because I feel like Reddick is just too much of a... It, it, this is a prime player that you can't get rid of if you're going for a Super Bowl, and that's like the main thing. If the Eagles were rebuilding this year, you know, then yeah, I think things would be a little different. I think you know we would go into a different direction, and, and you would make trades pretty easily. Um, you know what I mean? So i I get a little I get a little nervous at times, um, but hopefully, you know. I don't want this trade to go through and I feel like whatever is going to happen with this trade, I feel like they're not going to get what they, I feel like how he's not going to get the compensation. Okay. That he wants. And that's, um, I think is a big problem. And, um, you know, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it at this point, whether you just restructure him for a year, you know, just restructure him for, just restructure him for a year and just give him more guaranteed money up front this year and just let him play out the play out the year or um wait at least i don't know wait at least give him a, at least a year extension or something i mean i feel like it's doable it just depends on the money I, I, we don't even know what reddick wants whether it's 25 plus million whether that number has moved around i don't know if it has but i guess you know we'll see um you know in the future we'll see how it goes um, but what's going on, MJ, Donnie? Uh, let's see. Shrek, what's going on, dude? What's going on, man? Oh, shit. Did I not put the oops? See, I knew I forgot to do something today. Sorry, I forgot to put the chat thing on the screen. 
Give me a second. I'm just gonna paste this real quick and it should pop up. It should pop up. What's going on, Mark? Says, hey, Joey, what's up? What's going on, Mark? Jim, what's up, dude? Andrew Nathan, what's going on, man? Uh, says, would you move Reddick for a 25 conditional third round pick um, and a 24 fifth rounder? Um, if he performs well, we get a second and 25. Would you do it? We only like, uh, we only have like five picks next year. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you do a conditional where, you know, he sets a certain amount of reps that he gets during the season, which the third could turn to a second rounder, um, you know, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, I I don't want to get rid of him, dude. I mean, I don't even want to make it at this point. I don't even want to make it a conditional pick for Hassan Reddick. I, I don't even want that to happen at all, you know? It's just, to me, I, figured, I think it's just all undervalued. I'm not worried about the picks for next year. I'm not worried. If you're worried about picks for next year, I'm not worried about that because the Eagles are not drafting two guys in the second round. The Eagles are not drafting three players in the fifth round. You know what I mean? Like, they're going to get picks for next year. I'm not worried about that. They'll trade a pick, a late-round pick for a pick next year. You got you to realize the comp, the comp picks as well, okay? The comp picks, the Eagles will get their comp picks next year too. Greg Miller says, Joey, who do you want to draft with our first pick? Theoretically, like what I really want is I really want a cornerback. The issue I have is that Bradbury's probably not getting moved at this point. Haven't heard no news on Bradbury going anywhere. And if he's not going anywhere, then they're not going to be interested in trading for anybody. Uh, sorry, interested in, in drafting a corner in the first round. It's just the truth. I mean, I I would love to draft a corner in the first and like have him here for five years and produce and start day one. And, you know, I would love to get Quinion Mitchell if we can, but it just seems like if Bradbury's not getting moved and Fangio thinks he works in this system pretty well. Yeah. So I get it. Um, Bradbury is only a $4 million cap hit this year, so he's really cheap to keep on the roster. It's not expensive for him to stay here. But that's the only problem I have. Nikki, what's going on? Since with the Eagles kicking the tires on Anias Smith, I think it's pretty clear how he intends to look late in the draft for a slot receiver. I think after the first round, he's definitely looking for a wide receiver three. Whether he wants one of those big, fast receivers or he wants one of those pure wide receiver threes. If they're not looking for a guy down the road that starts as a wide receiver three now, and then, you know, kind of, you know, once A.J. Brown leaves, you look for your, um, you know, you look for your, you know, your future guy that moves to that other number one spot next to Devontae Smith, you know, or the number two, I should say, whatever. Um, you know, so whether it's Adonna Mitchell, whether it's, uh, you know, Xavier Leggett, I like two of those big receivers right there. Um, and even some of the smaller guys, which you could start immediately immediately would probably thrive with this offense like lad mcconkey and some of the other ones um that are out there i feel like there's a lot out there right now um so i feel like receiver is definitely on the board right now i don't think that they're done because Devonte parker is just an you know is a veteran signing but he's got to stay healthy and um you know i i don't think he's the future on this team at 31 years old i mean how many more years does he have left as a wide receiver um you know and i really like the paris campbell i think paris campbell will make the roster i don't see why not um but paris campbell has a lot a you know can play in the slot really well didn't do much with the giants last year obviously but had over 600 yards and um you know a couple years ago with the colts so you know i think there's some good things there but I'm I'm actually I'm dying for them to draft. As much as it sounds weird, I'm really dying for them. Um I'm really dying for them to draft a receiver this year. Somewhere, whether it's later, whether whenever it is. So we'll see. Uh, Isaiah says he has a $21 million cap, uh, cap hit. He's not playing. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's the issue. That's why I feel like if they have to do a restructure, I don't know if that that could affect the, the dead cap for this year. 
Um, but uh, you, you got to try to at least try to extend them if you can. If you can at least extend them one year, you at least save 11, 11 plus million dollars in cap space. So they couldn't play him. They couldn't just let him play normally just on his, you know, his current contract right now because because of that fucking cap hit that he has. So. But, I mean, it's like I don't feel like he's going, but then I feel like he is going. But it's just too quiet to the point where, like, I feel like nothing's getting done. Um, You know, whatever's been reported is kind of everything that we know so far. Um, You know, but if Howie's not getting the compensation he wants and Reddick is not moving down on his price, you know, they're not moving up on his price and he's not budging to let go of the number that he wants, then, I mean, he probably stays in Philadelphia at this point. Greg says, Hassan, please stay in Philly, bro. Please work something out. Many bucks to you and your son. Uh, Drew says, what up, Joe? What's going on, man? What's going on, Gabriel? Uh, it says, uh, has there been any word from Reddick's camp on what he'll do if he doesn't get an extension? He's getting $14 million this year. I, there's been nothing. There's been nothing. That's the issue. There's been no news on Reddick's camp, what, what his agent is saying, what he... That's that's pretty much, like, there's, there, there's nothing going on. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's been no news at all. It's just to a point now where I have to sit here and say, okay, well, what's best for this team right now? You know, is Howie Roseman the one that's... You know, I think it's Howie Roseman. I think it's Reddick. I think it's both. I think Reddick wants his higher price. He wants his higher number. And I think that because he's a premier guy, you know, four years with three teams, four years with double digit sacks, man. I mean, you don't do that shit. You know what I mean? You don't you don't do that and you know get less compensation for it because Reddick isn't um he's not descending as a player uh he's very productive if i even thought he was descending even this much if he wasn't even producing at all or he was starting to like his age was starting to catch up with him or something like that i would totally just get rid of him but that's not the case i think Reddick can play for another few years um at a high level that he's capable of so i think it's going to be a big loss for the eagles because you have you have nothing anything else is going to be a downgrade nobody in the first round is going to replace that this year nobody for a trade is going to produce what Hassan is going to produce on that side theoretically you get rid of Hassan Reddick on that side at the level he's at right now in his career it's a weakness uh, Josh Wett's not going to replace it none of these other guys are going to replace it it's just that's the way it goes What's going on, Young True with the Super Chat? Thank you so much, man. He says, Reddick, Taze, we're getting second drafts in Buddha. Yeah, so here's another thing, which I think I think you kind of stand corrected on this, Young Truth. I think maybe it's just taking a little bit longer because maybe they want maybe the Eagles want more. So, like, hey, if we can't get a high draft pick, say they can only get a third round pick, it's like, all right, well, we want a better player. You know? We need a player. We want a player of need. So if you give, if you only want to give us a third, we want one of your players. So it could be a a, a pick. It could be a pick player, uh, player swap. You know what I mean? So it it, it could be. Um, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't shock me if if that's what it is. Um, you know, but AZ's got a really nice pick. You know, as much as I don't want to trade for their second because I just don't want to trade them. Period. If I had to, yeah. I mean, AZ's got the thirty-fifth pick in this draft, which is a very good pick. I mean, right out of the first round, right, right on the second day, coming right out of the first round, few picks. Okay, so I mean, that's a really good pick to have that you can either move up on the first day or you could, you know, let the first day roll if they see a lot of players kind of moving down. I mean, the Eagles will have a lot of interest probably on that pick, which they could definitely trade the 35th pick back if they end up getting it from AZ, um, you know, and doing more with it. But I would, you know, obviously pick somebody at 35 because someone's going to be right there at 35 for the Eagles to take. Um, so, and that could be a potential. Uh, that 35 could be a potential. It could be a starter. I mean, because someone is going to is going to drop out of the first and land to the Eagles' hands if they have that pick. So. So we'll see. 
Uh, Nikki says, Ryan, Flournoy, Jamari, Thrash, and I, uh, uh, Inaya Smith are my targets for slot wide receivers late in the draft. Any other year, they are third-round guys. I got to I gotta check both of them out. I haven't checked them out yet, but I haven't even heard of those guys, surprisingly. But this, it doesn't look like the Eagles and Reddick are stressing out as much as we fans are. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's just I don't think it's stressful on them. I think we're making a big deal out of it, which we always do anyway. Like the more at least when Josh Sweat got restructured, I would have at least wanted to hear some news on Reddick. Like, oh hey, Reddick's saying his final goodbye to Philadelphia. Reddick's on his way out, but that's not the case. I don't think Howie's trying to move on from Hassan Reddick. Whatever that report is, it is what it is, but I don't think they've been trying to move on from Hassan Reddick at all. So, Maria says Rodgers was fifth best cornerback in the league when he was suspended, and Hall was one of the top top cornerbacks last year. Yeah, so Tyler Hall, interesting enough, like he had limited snaps. Um, he had limited snaps, but I think he is definitely a big sleeper for camp, no doubt. I think that move made Avante Maddox be bye bye, see you later, because I don't think he's coming back. I honestly don't. Um, they let you know they could have saved over seven million dollars if it was a post June cup, but they cut him now. They saved two million dollars, and you know he visited the Saints, and that was pretty much it at this point. Um, but Isaiah Rogers, yeah, he's a, he's a high ranked quarterback for last year. High ranked plays kick return. I mean, he's a kick returner too, a legit one too. Um, he's real twitchy. He's got a lot of speed. Um, Isaiah Rogers is very exciting coming to the secondary. I'm telling you, he's been working his ass off this year. The only bad thing about Isaiah Rogers right now is he hasn't played in a year and a half, you know, in a year. You know what I mean? So, you know, guy hasn't played in a year, hasn't really hit anybody in a year, you know. So, you know, it's gonna take him a couple, you know, maybe a week, couple practices, get himself back into the groove of things again. But I think they have the best depth at corner right now. I think they're perfect right now, really. Between Eli Ricks and Ringo and Zach McPherson and Tyler Hall and, and some of these other guys they have, Isaiah Rogers coming into the frame of things. Yeah, I mean, you know, Isaiah Rogers couldn't talk to the team last year. He couldn't he couldn't do anything. When you're on the exempt list, you can't talk to the team. You can't be with the team. You can't hang out with – I mean, obviously, outside of football, you can hang out with teammates or something like that. But you can't be around nobody when you're suspended. You can't be in a, in a building. You can't be in a, at the NovaCare. You can't do anything. So he's been away from the team. I mean – he hasn't even talked. He hasn't even talked to Howie yet. And the next thing that uh, Isaiah Rogers, I think, is still on the exempt list right now. So he's got to meet with Roger Goodell this year um, before the training camp starts, and he's got to get you know get himself off the list. Um, and that's it. Obviously, ladies and players are paid for future production, not past. Well, yeah, I mean, you're you're pay, you're you're paying for you're paying for ceiling. I mean, you're paying for what you think a player is going to do. You know, you're pl you're paying players off of what they're doing now, but you're paying them for what you think they're going to do later on. You know, so. Chris is Reddick, Sweat, Smith, and Huff will play a good amount of minutes. Graham will play at only in special situations. Don says, Joey, would you trade a fourth and a son Reddick for a second? Use a second to move up and uh, get uh, layout two, let's two, and still have two seconds left. Yeah, sure. I mean, if they could do it, I mean, I don't want to do any of this. I don't want to trade him, period. Like I've said, like, you know, I'm only, I'm only answering some of your questions, um, you know. Uh, Greg said, I really like edge rusher from UCLA, Laya Tula, too. I think he's the best edge rusher in this draft. I do. As much as people are afraid of the neck concerns from 2020 when he was almost medically retired, um, I think he's a top 15 pick. Um, you know, but depending on scheme and how they want to use him is going to be another question. I, I, as a talent standpoint, I think he's the best edge rusher. Um, but you got to pick best player available at the end of the day. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. 
And they said Rod is an outside corner. Would you bring Maddox back for one year, seven million, making any injury based contract, get vet minimum the guaranteed money, and he can learn uh more by staying on the field? I, I don't know, dude. Like I don't know. Like it's gotta be the it's gotta be the most minimum deal we could give him because at this point, like Isaiah Rodgers could play plays outside, but he doesn't mind playing inside. He has stated that he can play inside if they needed him to. Um and Tyler Hall is a pure slot guy, pure nickel guy on the inside. Um, and that's, you know, that's that's a huge thing. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. I, I think they've, I don't know if they're bringing him back. Maybe they do. I'm not sure. I mean, from the moves that they've made so far at corner, like I feel like they brought in enough guys. I don't know if he even fits the mold in here anymore. And can really trust him to really do much of anything with the injuries that he has. So I guess we'll see. Chris said, I would love that if we could draft best player available, if we can sign Reddick and Simmons or Blackman, we could take. Oh, yeah, no. Well, you're always taking best player available regardless. I don't care if you have a hole somewhere or not. I think you're you're drafting best player available. Even if you have a hole at defensive end, you're drafting the best guy that's on the board right there. Um, You know what I mean? So. I don't know which way they're going. I don't know which way they're going to go, but I mean, I feel like the Reddick thing is going to get figured out and I feel like they are going to sign either Julian Blackman. They're, they are they are going to sign um, you know, at least, you know, Justin Simmons, one of those two. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Julian Blackman visited the 49ers and I haven't heard any word that he got a contract. Didn't I know he I know he's been visiting a couple teams. I forgot what Forgot before the Niners, he went to another team. I forgot where else he went, and he, and he came out without a contract. The 49ers was the second team that Julian Blackman visited. I didn't hear much of anything after that, so. I'll see, Tom, I really don't want Rick to go to Atlanta. They got a young, good defense, and win the division and we might have to play them in the playoffs just restructure for this year and let reddick play out you think the falcons are going to make the playoffs this year <laughs> i mean that's too early to tell and you know kirk cousins still gets paid a lot of money to do absolutely nothing because he doesn't do anything in the playoffs he doesn't win in big he doesn't win in big moments um you know what i mean like i wouldn't go crazy to say that they're a contender because they need edge rushers badly. They don't have any right now. Um, and, you know, their offense, yeah, has gotten better, sure. But, you know, we're talking about Kirk Cousins here. You know, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I'm not going to say they're going to make the playoffs yet, but we'll see. Let's see. Uh... Versus Shakes, if Brock Bowers drops to 22, would you take him? He's more athletic and faster. Well, it depends what, who else is on the board. Well, who else is on the board at, by that time? You know, if there's if there's a trench guy that falls that falls down, like, would I get him? If Chop Robinson falls down, would I get him? You know, like, you know, I, I don't know. What's the better talent? You know, what's the better talent in that situation? I don't think they're going after a center in this draft. I don't think so. So... LeBron Rodgers, what's going on, man? So we really need a wide receiver in the first round. I want Keon Coleman, but we really need more help on the O-line. I hope uh, Keon falls to us, him and C. Lamb or Cousins. That would be fun. Yeah, I mean, you guys, yeah, I mean, offensive line is like, I mean, don't don't get another, don't get another skill position. There's plenty of receivers in this draft, probably into the third round, that could play pretty damn well in a good system. I would probably get offensive line. I really just depends on depends on the. Uh, I forgot what pick pick the Cowboys have this year, but um, I, you always got to go best player available in the first round. But if there's an offensive lineman available, I think you got to take him at this point. So, BMX, I agree. Joey, depth in the quarterback position. All we need is Reddick in the pass rush rotation. That would be another position with depth. Mark says it'd be nice when the Reddick situation is over with, one way or another. Uh, hopefully soon. Stevens, I think Xavier Worthy would be a good number three, but definitely need to keep Reddick. Yes, I like Xavier Worthy. I don't think, I, to be honest with you, like I don't know if Worthy's going to be a first round pick. He might be a late. I, I don't think he's going to be like. I don't think he's going to go early as everyone thinks he is. Um, but we'll see. 
Todd, if we lose Reddick, honestly, don't trade up to get an edge up for uh, you know, an edge trade up for cornerback. No pass rusher is going to make it match Reddick's production. Will Anderson was top three pick and got seven sacks. Just draft edge in second. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, you you want to get not only because your pass rush and your coverage is hand in hand. Um, you know, it it is hand in hand because you have you know there's there's sometimes you have those coverage sacks where you have good coverage from your secondary and you know your defensive line will have more time to get to the quarterback and if the and if the, obviously the defensive line gets to the quarterback early, your cornerbacks are gonna have no issue um, on coverage. You know, so it's it's hand in hand at the end of the day. So you know, we'll see what happens. Ernst, if Steen can be viewed as a possible backup for Lane, we can draft uh, JBJ to, to, to plug in that guard. Yeah, I mean, look, I don't, I, I think, I think Steen just needs more time. I, I people are like calling. I don't know why people are calling out Steen, Steen as of right now. I think, I think Teen, I think Steen is. Um, he just needs another off season. The only way Jurgen started over him at right guard was really because he just had more time under his belt, and play's been working with Kelsey, like you know non-stop so every off season so it's really helped him in the in these off seasons uh but i think they should i think well they're gonna draft an offensive lineman anyway within the first you know few picks you know what i mean so i think that's already going to happen but with steen i think they should try to cross him somewhere else um depending if they don't draft the right tackle i think they should try to at least cross train him to not even just right guard but try to have him play right tackle since i know tyler steen was naturally a left tackle uh but matt hennessy you know 22 starts under his belt last year um you know uh i mean you know in his career i should say you know 22 starts and uh you know is matt hennessy's actually not a bad player that plays center and plays guard i think that was a really good free agent pickup for the eagles um you know what i mean so now you you have a guy that's naturally played center and you have a guy that's played right guard which is good so um you know kind of won't lose a beat there with him but i mean we'll see uh what the competition looks like at that spot but center wise i think it's gonna it's gonna stay as cam jurgens for now Darrell says, what do you think of drafting Braylon Allen? Uh, Braylon Allen would be great. Braylon Allen would be great. Um, you know, but I don't know the, between the back end of their offense and what they're doing. Um, I'm not, I'm not sure. Let me see here. Um, if you want to fix what you want at running back, if they feel like they're going to add another piece, and, you know, I would love for them to have a bruiser back, a more bruiser, shifty type back. And Braylon Allen, I mean, I did a membership video on him um, of his highlights, and, man, dude, like, I was like, damn. Like, that, I, I haven't seen a player like that in forever, um, you know, but... The Eagles have three. I mean, the Eagles have obviously Saquon Barkley. You have, um, you obviously have Kenneth Gainwell. And if you add, you have that Tyrion Davis Price, whatever his name is from the 49ers. I guess he's somewhat of a bruiser type. Um, I guess he's somewhat of a bruiser type shifty back, but. I mean, he doesn't weigh that much. You know, your brain allowance, what, 6'3", 240? I mean, it's 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 night and day when it comes to just how big he is. Um, you know, so. Pause. I think he said, Hassan restructure saves 11.92. Hassan saves 11.8. Yeah, I mean, it's a, you're saving 11 plus regardless on anything that you do with him. So um, you're getting a big chunk of money back is great which the eagles definitely definitely need and um you know that money will go towards next year or whatever because i think they're not going to do as crazy amount of signings besides the draft not a crazy amount of signings coming up um in a bit robert says julian blackman visited buffalo yes it, it was buffalo okay because i got i totally forgot i know he visited another team without a contract um so he went from buffalo you know which they need they need secondary help uh they had to let go of a lot of guys in their defense um and uh yeah they're gonna have to go somewhere else as well so the 49ers need some depth oh, as well you know and we'll see Marisa Stallion has already said Steen is a guard that gives him Brooks vibes well that's good I mean look if he if they want to keep him strictly at guard that's fine 
whatever Stalin says, wherever he says it goes the way it goes. Let's see. This guy listens to 500. I love it. Wait, what? They said, why would we waste a third-round pick on a running back? The draft is deep, a big buy pass catching back from four or seven rounds. Yeah, like, I, I, I'm I, not worried about running back. I, I've said a million times, day three, go get a running back on day three. Day three, get a running back. Get a get a get a dual threat. Get I don't know whatever they want. They want a bruiser. They want like a more of a dual threat. You know, maybe a, a smaller type back that's that where you know that can fit with this offense with Kellen Moore's offense. Well, like I I haven't been interested in the running backs at all to be honest with you. Like day three, I would probably get one maybe. Um, you know, but importance of the first three rounds is definitely not running back. So we're way we're way beyond that. Um, especially getting Saquon Barkley in the building now. If they didn't have Saquon Barkley, then sure, I think they would have to at least try to hit the third round, maybe to the fourth, uh, to get somewhat of a running back. But as of right now, I'm not really. I don't. Whether they pick one up or don't, or rely on a nobody, uh, they could do that. You know, even if they're trying to keep three running backs for the season, you know, we'll we'll see. Yeah, man, he's a good player, really good player. Um, I think that was a really underrated pickup they got with him. So, Ryan Reddick has earned more money, and not a lot of players earn the best contract. Yeah, well, he deserves it. Mark says, hopefully, we're able to sign some good for, uh, sign some good free agents that will enable us to focus on the best player available in the draft. Well, I mean, I think we have. I mean. Um, I think we signed I think we signed a good and I, I really a good enough. I think really the only will I be satisfied. Okay, I'll be satisfied with Reddick stays. You pick up Julian Blackman, you pick up Justin Simmons, one of those two. Okay, Nick Scott's gone. He signed with the team. Um, so you're you're wearing thin right now. Um, Justin Simmons, a whole nother day, nothing again. How many more days is it gonna be until you know Justin Simmons is gonna get so, uh, something that he wants at this point, you know, so it's kind of nuts. Chris says, our line is one first round pick on it. Lane Johnson, Malata, six, Dickerson, second, Steen, third, Jurgen, second. Uh, yeah, it's it's crazy, man. But that's what I'm saying. When you have a, have a co- like, you don't have to, like, everyone panics and says, oh, my God, we have to get the best offensive lineman in the first round. It's like, no, we do not have to do that. <laughs> you know, we, we don't have to do that because I look, look what – Look honestly, what uh, Jeff Stallion has done with this offensive line, and how, how much of the, some of these players he's hit on already um, is, is amazing. Tommy, what's going on, man? So theoretically, if we get a second for Reddick, then we use the trade up in the first and have two seconds left. We draft cornerback, edge, linebacker. Um, then we'd have to wait until fourth until we trade up to hit a wide receiver or line correct. Uh, yeah, because you don't have a third round pick, so you are right. Yes, yes. You get a second, you trade up, you get two top prospects, you still have another two second rounders for edge and linebacker, and then you have to wait until the fourth round. So, yeah, you are, you are right. You are right. Reddick ain't a bum. He's irrelevant without good scheme. Also trash against the run. Yeah, but what what are defensive ends getting paid for? I think in, I think when it comes to the coverage, they could they could I think they can actually put him in a scheme with coverage. The problem is like you have the wrong coaches doing it. I think you just have the wrong coaches doing it. That's that's just the problem. I think you could put him in a coverage type scheme. I mean, I'm not saying he's gonna be in coverage the whole entire game because it's not that's not the case. I think there's gonna be multiple players are gonna use um in that scheme for coverage or putting somebody on the line. Like 
that's uh, I, I mean when i hear the statement of like defensive ends can't stop the run is the i don't know to me i think it's really stupid because you're paying you're you're paying reddick you're paying you think bryce huff is good against the run no bryce huff is getting paid defensive ends edge rushers get paid to go after the quarterback Simple as that. Simple as that. And it's not like Reddick has never made a tackle in the backfield or he's never stopped, you know, anything against the run. Like, they're just not top players against it. That doesn't mean they can't do it. I think it's a bunch of bullshit when people say that, to be honest. Like, they're all trash against the run. They're trash against the run. Well, dude, they're not paying him top dollar to stop the run. They're paying him top dollar to pass rush. Even if Reddick gets pressure, you're helping the guy next to you to get pressure to get through the line. Like... You know what I mean? So it's it's hand in hand, dude. It's hand in hand. This defensive end, this their trash against the run comments is just it's so fucking old because every player, it's just ridiculous. That's why you have other positions on your team to stop the run. Like it's 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 really stupid. It's a, it's a dumb statement. I don't know why people say that. It's so stupid. It's like, you know, Chris, the TJ Watt makes uh, 34 million a year. Reddick had 11 sacks last year and, and 16 the year before. He's worked 25 uh, million for two years. If it's 25 mil for two years, yeah, he wants, you know, his number was 25 a year, you know? Um, I haven't looked, dude. I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. I haven't looked at any tight ends. I haven't looked at any 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 tight ends at all in this draft. I'm going through linebackers. I'm going through corner. I'm going through the mo more important shit right now because tight ends are like, for me, it's like, yeah, we need our number two. Albert O signed. You know, well, I guess Kellen Moore wants to see more out of Albert O, and I want to see more out of Albert O as well. Calcaterra is just an injury prone mess right now. Jack Stahl is gone to the Giants. Um. So, you know, we'll look at the tight ends in the future. Wait, if he said Matt Hen uh, Hennessy reminds me of Stefan Wisniewski. Damn. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Wisniewski was good, man. Even, even like, when Jason Peters, like, got hurt that year. I mean, Halapuli Vadi Vaitai, man, like, he just came out of nowhere and played really well. Like, he, can't, he went in. I think he had, like, one or two bad reps. The whole year. I think one was in that Panthers game. He had an issue in that Panthers game. But Vitae was a great... Vitae went in there and barely missed a beat. That was the mo one of the most surprising things. No Eddie Jackson. He seems more realistic. Yeah, but he hasn't played well in a long time. He hasn't really played well since Fangio left. But, you know... I want someone that's playing well right now, and that's not a guy that's playing well right now. Eddie Jackson's a free agent. Tracy Walker's probably still out there at 28 from Detroit. Um, you know, but Justin Simmons is uh, is playing at an all pro level right now. And Julian Blackman just had a gruesome injury, and he's a low risk, high reward move that's a very good guy in the secondary. So. Boss, well, so if you look how Fangio's scheme works, Reddick isn't the best fit. But when you, uh, but when you uh, vids on the scheme, he can't really play in coverage. Uh, if we don't re-sign him, it's not a big deal. I can see us getting D-line first. Yeah, we'll see. I don't think it's impossible to not put him in the scheme. I know people are going to say, well, they put him in coverage. It didn't work. Yeah, when you put him in coverage, but you have to make sure that all the other pieces are in movement and are being aligned as well with your cornerbacks and how your linebackers are playing. It's It's more than just... It's more than just putting him in coverage and he doesn't do anything. Like everything else has to work too. Um, I'm not saying it's impossible not to put him in coverage because he's been in that system before. Um, but you know they're not going to put him in coverage 24 seven either because this isn't just three four. It's multiple fronts. It's multiple scheme fronts. So they could put him at the line if they want. They could put six in the box if they want. They could they could do whatever they want. You know what I mean? Um, so we'll we'll see, but
I'm sick of hearing about Justin Simmons. Well, that's what you guys get because how many times I hear about Patrick Patrick Sertain every single day. Now you guys are going to hear about me saying Justin Simmons every day now. So that's how that goes. And this is the same fans will be going at Howie when Smith wants more than 25 a year. Who's who? Who's going to complain about that? That's the rate. I mean, for for wide receivers, that's the rate. You know what I mean? How it will make the numbers work. I'm not worried about that. Rhea says, Reddick and Sweat will play half the snaps they did last year since he'll be running more three, four, uh, four linebackers on the field. <clears throat> Bill says, let Hennessy plug at right guard spot. This is a wide receiver cornerback draft, and we should take advantage of that unless we got to go edge because we traded Hassan. Oh, that's what I, I don't want to make it. See, the, the thing is, I don't want to make it obvious in this draft. Like, you get rid of Hassan Reddick, oh, every team is going to know what the Eagles are going to do now. You know, like, we don't know what's going to happen yet. It's still quiet with the Hassan Reddick thing, so the more quiet it is, the better it's going to be. That report yesterday was like, okay, great, like, they might trade him, but it doesn't mean it's going to happen. Like, they're still trying to figure out shit. All that was was a tweet saying they're still trying to figure it out. That's all it was. It wasn't, it didn't make anything promising that he was going to get traded. So, uh, Jason, be honest, if Quinn Mitchell isn't there, the Eagles don't move up. Where do you think Quinn Mitchell goes and who is your second option at quarterback if he's off the? You mean cornerback if he's off the board, not quarterback. My second option at corner, if Quinion Mitchell is off the board, it's probably going to be Nate Wiggins or, and Terry and Arnold. It's probably going to be both of those guys. I like Nate Wiggins a lot. I don't care about how undersized he is, or and they think he doesn't have a big frame. Or that man is that that he plays tough, dude. I mean, he doesn't have the biggest frame. I get it, but um. I like Nate Wiggins. I'm starting to like Nate Wiggins a lot, but I do like uh, I do like Tarion a lot too. So, uh, see, Reddick is 20 year player at best, irrelevant against the running coverage. Let's see. But yeah, I thought Big V had a bad game against the Redskins when he took Lane Johnson's spot. That was Andre Dillard, dude. That was Dillard. That wasn't... You're thinking about the wrong player, I think. Dillard took over for Lane Johnson's spot and he got destroyed. That wasn't... That wasn't Vitae. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't remember... I don't remember Vitae getting dismantled. I remember him having like a bad fucking rep, but not getting dismantled like that. So, just to Joe, you think the Eagles should get Bre uh, Brendan Rice from USC, USC for rusher three, then a future rusher two, and the AJ Brown contract is up? Two receivers in one draft? No. They're either getting a guy strictly for wide receiver three this year, or they're going to get a guy for the future that can play wide receiver three and then have him as a future number two next to Devontae Smith. Um, so, I mean, I haven't, I haven't looked at Brendan Rice at all. I've looked at all the other. I haven't looked at Brendan Rice at all. I know Brendan Rice is coming in for a pre-draft visit, obviously. Um, so, so what's the update on Justin Simmons? Are we still involved? I feel like if we can get a visit, we could get the deal. Well, he might not want a visit. I mean, some some players want visits, some players don't. I don't feel like he's having. He's not doing any visits. That's the issue right now. He's not doing any visits. So, I'm um, not even the issue, but. Um, you know, I don't think he's going to visit teams. I think he, I think he's going to talk to some teams and see what happens. But the more quiet it is, the better it is for us. His price is going to keep going down. Um, you add another safety to this group. I'm keeping a close eye on Julian Blackman and Justin Simmons because I'm sorry, but the Justin Simmons thing, I think it's very realistic going forward. Yeah, Jadavian Clowney's another one, which like that's another guy you could pick up on the edge too if they really wanted to. I mean, this guy gets like this guy gets you know eight, what ten sacks. I mean, this guy every year is always very, very productive. I don't know if Clowney signed yet because I know he was visiting the Panthers, so I don't know what happened. But it's just crazy how Clowney is just um, Clowney's very productive. He's a journeyman edge rusher. Really, ever since he left the Texans, he's been mostly a journeyman edge rusher. Um, 
uh leonard floyd's another one that's productive every single year like leonard floyd's another guy he's with the 49ers now like he goes from team to team to team every year we're not extending aj brown if you're keeping one of those two players who are you keeping the most you're keeping Devonte smith or aj brown you're keeping Devonte smith Devonte smith is a homegrown talent drafted in philadelphia that's a guy you don't get rid of a heisman trophy winner that we haven't even seen we haven't even seen the best we haven't even seen the best out of Devonte smith yet not really because of him but because of this damn scheme um and some of the play calling like we haven't seen the best out of Devonte smith at all if i'm picking between Devonte smith and, and aj brown for a contract i'm picking Devonte smith in a heartbeat Devontae Smith is, it's not easy to find a guy like that. And it's not just his play, it's his attitude, it's how he carries himself, it's determination, it's work ethic, it's so much more that goes into just play on the field, you know. More so, so the more I watch Shaw Robinson, the more I want to take him at 22, no ditty. Why is everybody saying no Diddy now? God. Everybody's saying no Diddy now. Dade says, so he's top three edge guy, even with the thumb and meltdown. He says, you can't trade a double digit sack defensive end, hope a rookie. Well, that's what I'm saying, dude. That's what I've been telling everybody. You can't. Every, anybody that they draft, trade for, if they trade Hassan Reddick, if they get rid of Hassan Reddick, nobody is going to, nobody's going to come close to even producing at that level right now. So. Julian Perez says, I miss guys like Chris Maragos bringing that contagious energy and just setting the tone on special teams. A lot of people really forgot how important that is. Yeah, he was a great player, man. Great player. He brought hype to that. He brought hype, to, even for like, even if they were kicking off beginning of the game, like he brought some hype to that special teams unit. I this is Justin Simmons who wants 16 a year not happening. I I love when you guys say that these players are getting a specific amount of who where's a report saying he wants 16 a year? Is this actual news or is this the funny papers? Because I think a lot of people read the funny papers way too much. I think a lot of you guys read the funny papers way too much. Like legit, like if what I haven't made a video saying Justin Simmons wants 16 million a year because I've never seen it. So Come on now. Smitty and, and AJ Brown are two different receivers, but I'm keeping I'm keeping Devontae Smith because I feel like you can always go into a draft. You can always get a guy for the future that can have, you know, a big body with speed. I think there's guys, I think there's a guy, at least a guy in this draft that could be better than AJ Brown in the future, to be honest with you. I'm not even kidding. Devontae Smith, like, when it comes to his hands, when it comes to, it's, that's just a dude you just can't get rid of, you can't get rid of. Um... I heard Ter uh, Greg says I heard Terran Arnold had better numbers than Kool Aid McKinstry Alabama because quarterbacks wouldn't throw to Kool Aid size often. Kool Aid McKinstry must be locked down. Yeah, we got to see what about the Jones the Jones fracture in his pinky foot too. That's a whole other thing that teams are going to be looking at as well. I thought he had ten sacks last year. I thought he had 10. Jay says, Joe, you really have to run around the butter, butter ball naked and run around with the peanut butter on you if the Eagles draft a line. I, I promise to God I will do it. 
I promise to God I will do it. If they if they draft a linebacker in the first round, I, I 100% will do it. But I don't have to worry about that. Uh, just if they keep Reddick, it's going to make that Huff contract look really silly. Um... If they keep Reddick, it's going to make the Huff contract look real silly. Why? Why is that? Because they're adding a future guy to the team? No, it's not it's not silly at all. That Huff contract's going to look cheaper than dog shit in a couple years, probably another year. Like because Bryce Huff is going to be a really good player, and after this year going into another year with the Eagles, that contract is going to be really cheap with the production that he's going to give us. So, trust me, it's not going to look stupid. Even if Reddick is here, it's not going to look stupid. People just guess about contracts. Yeah, I'm not going to guess about contracts. I'll guess like if they're going to come to Philadelphia, but I'm not going to just guess on a number just to put it out there. Ernest Wallace has many better hands than always open AJ open AJ Brown. When, but when have we seen the best out of Devontae Smith in, in a good position, dude? I think we're I think we're looking too far into what AJ Brown has done. Like with you know, even like AJ Brown's a fantastic player, there's no doubt about it. But I think always you have to keep the homegrown talent in Philadelphia. You're telling me right now that Devontae Smith is gonna you you're telling me you'd rather keep AJ Brown over Devontae Smith? And you're just look, you're looking at it because he's more physical, bigger receiver. It's not it's not about that. It's yeah, it's about play, sure. But Devontae Smith, we haven't we haven't seen a, the best season out of Devontae Smith yet in a good system. Seriously, in a in a really good system. Like watch this year what Devontae Smith does. I think AJ Brown has benefited more than Smith has. And that's just me. I just feel like I just feel like Devontae Smith brings more to the table. I think he's got better hands. I think he's got better route running. And obviously he's faster. Simple as that. How many times do we ever see Devontae Smith in open field? Like seriously, how many times do we ever see Devontae Smith has really had an open field catch? Like, like trying to find that empty window. You know what I mean? I've I've never even how many times do we ever see that? We don't see it that much because of how these route combinations are, what these coaches want these receivers to run these specific routes. It's horrible. I think it's always been contested with Smitty. It's always contested with these receivers because the coaches don't don't know how to create guys getting open. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a, it's a problem. Got Joseph Thies with the Super Chat. Thank you so much, man. He says, I have, I have dealing with medical issues since before the Super Bowl, but um back look, but I'm back. Love your content. File is file. Well, dude, dude, I I hope you're all right. Hopefully it's not too serious, but it sounds like it, it was by how long you've had it for. But I hope I hope you're good, man. I hope uh whatever it is, it got better. And um yeah, dude, make sure make sure you're all right, man. I I appreciate you coming back and uh, appreciate the super chat, but dude, like I, I hope it wasn't too crazy. I'm sorry for that. You know, I know I know a lot of people have been in the hospital rec as of recent as well. So, uh, or have been sick for a while. So, um, hope you're feeling better, man, Joe. Hope you're feeling good. Appreciate it so much for the super chat, but I hope you're really feeling better. Hopefully, the content's helping you out. So, um. They say Xavier Leggett should be a monster in the NFL. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like if you drafted Xavier Leggett to play in the slot, I think he could be a, a potential replacement for A.J. Brown. You know what I mean? 
Like, I feel like there are guys out there. I think Leggett's faster than A.J. Brown, to be honest. I mean, I mean Xavier Leggett reminds me of A.J. Brown, like, like a lot. <laughs> like, no joke. I think it's a carbon copy almost with, with him. Yeah, prayers for Joe. Yeah, yeah. Hope he's feeling better. BMX says, uh, I don't know Joey Spinney, my guy, but I remember seeing him drop more pass than I remember seeing AJ. What, some of the, what, some of the drops, the, what, that were, that should have been called back that he caught? I just think it's, I just think he's a better overall talent. Because I think when it comes to AJ Brown's size, and I feel like you can always get a guy like that. Smitty is just different. Uh, you know, it's hard for small receivers to even make it in the NFL and guys that work as hard as Smitty. I don't think we've seen the best from Smitty. I think AJ Brown has just had the better. I think AJ Brown has, has just had the better career in Philly than Smitty. Not saying Smitty hasn't had a good career in Philly, but I'm just saying when it comes to play, when it comes to opportunity, I don't think we've seen the best out of Smitty yet. Um, and at this point, um, at this point, I think, you know, Smith, Devontae Smith is going to get a contract extension, so it's going to happen, you know? Well, I don't, I don't know. Vandal says homegrown Joe Smith has great attitude. It's going to be a great one receiver when we trade AJ. No, they're not. They're not trading AJ next season. <laughs> it's definitely not happening. Not trading AJ. Um, definitely not trading him. But uh, I feel like um, you know you got like a couple years. I've got this year, next year, and I think that's it. Um, so see what things change. And I, I feel like they have to do something in this draft when it comes to receiver down the line. I think they're going to have to. Okay, Port to Joey, you have 20, 20 second pick. No corners are off the board. Who are you taking? Oh, I'm taking Quinion Mitchell. The only question I have with Quinion Mitchell is obviously coming from Toledo and the competition that he's faced. Other than that, I like his play. I like how physical he is. Um, I like his pushback attitude. I mean, I think he fits well in 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 this. You know, especially I think he's I think he's a great tackler. I think he's in in space, good run support. I think I think he's great all over. I, I think this is a guy that's going to be very underrated. So um, it just depends on you know. Hopefully, we're not fooled by you know just because of competition that he's faced in the league, and that's really it. That's all. That's really all I worry about with him. But. I'm taking them though. Jason says AJ is a generational talent. I think AJ is a fantastic talent. I think Devontae Smith is a generational talent, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? I feel like. Devontae Smith has made a lot of plays in this league for being a small receiver for what he's done, especially in Washington, what he's done um, a lot of games. Um, and especially being used the correct way, I, I can't imagine what type of season he's going to have. I think he's going to have a really good year this year. I think both guys are going to have a really, I mean, two 1,000. I mean, seriously, guys, like you've had two 1,000 yard receivers and a 1,000 yard running back, two straight years two different running backs two straight years i mean it's unheard of i think a lot of people a lot of people like the bigger physical receiver because they're more entertaining i guess and and maybe Devonte smith is boring to people i don't know i don't know i don't know when you have that receiver that's like a fantastic route runner and has good coaching behind it with Wait till you see the dude. The only dude. Every every route was contested because teams know what the Eagles are doing all year last year. Like to get Kellen Moore in here now, and you got pre snap motion. You have. I mean, there's so much that they could be doing offensively, like moving Devontae Smith middle of the field. Look what Devontae Smith did. I'm telling you, AJ Brown. AJ Brown can't run out a whole can't can't run out a whole defense. I think we've seen that. He can't do that. We've seen it. Okay, between the last two years, we haven't seen A.J. Brown outrun the whole entire defense. Okay. Um, 
it's just it's just to a point now where remember the remember the playoff game where actually we had, we weren't using middle of the field all year, and that's another thing that made it harder for Smitty to even have. I mean, no crossers, no, I mean, nothing, no hot route, no nothing. So remember that Tampa Bay game? Remember the one play, cover zero, cover zero, blitz. That's how the, that's how the Eagles were beat all year. Cover zero, blitz, cover zero, blitz, cover zero, blitz, okay? They threw to Smitty on a slant pass on a cover zero blitz, and he was already at the fucking 35 on the other side of the field from one play, one play. That's, that's all it takes. It's all it takes. The see when is when is the time when do we ever see Smitty in open space? We never see it because we didn't use middle of the field and everything's contested because they like I said they just they, they they don't use anything inside like that's they don't move the receivers around. We were promised from Nick Sirianni that there you know when he was here as a head coach when he we promised us as his first year oh we're going to move all our receivers around you know they they don't move anybody around they barely move anybody around they don't at all Smitty needs AJ and AJ needs Smitty okay that's 100% truth without they both you need they need each other okay that's 100 percent. it's 100 percent. and obviously both those receivers need jalen hurts you know didn't know cj had a tackle or cover problem. No, I, 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 I totally get it. You saw the offense. How look, AJ didn't get the ball, but dude, it's more than that. It's, it's. Look what they had to deal with. Like, look what the, all the players offensively had to deal with. If you're not using middle of the field, I don't think people are actually listening. I don't. I think people just like look at the year and say, "Oh, he didn't do shit because like." He's got to follow a play, follow a route that he has to run, and it's just, that's how it goes. But he's younger than AJ, and there's literally multiple receivers in this draft that you could get in the second round. That's AJ 2.0. That's what I think. I think AJ's easily replaceable with some receivers in this draft. That's all I'm going to say. Um, because I don't think they're keeping both guys. Let's be realistic. I'm not saying because I'm not hating on AJ Brown. I just don't think they're, I, you know, I don't think AJ's going to be here. Unless AJ takes a massive pay cut on his, you know, on another contract, that's a whole different story. But I'm sorry, but he's going to get paid a lot more <laughs> from what he's done even after having this new contract. I mean, even the six consistent games, 125 plus yards, breaking Calvin Johnson's consecutive yard yardage record i mean he's breaking records when it comes to you know mike quick's receiving yard record in a season i mean it's it's insane it's insane Kevin the creators is respectfully Joey the Titans thought AJ was replaceable. No, and that's well that well they're they they look at well they built they built their fucking offense around a running back. <laughs> come come on now. Like we had more common sense than that. Come on now. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 AJ with the Titans and AJ with the Eagles are two different two different teams, two different moments of time where Come on now. Well, Jones says, so Joey, I see a lot of us do the same routes as far as the routes not utilizing the seam, uh, seams as QB problem, not a scheme problem. It is a scheme problem. It's a total scheme problem. 
if you're not gonna if they, if you don't have a route that you're running middle of the field, then that's what you're running. You're running whatever you're running next to the receiver. How many times this past season did you see receivers running into each other nonstop? Like just it's just bad play design. That's why guys we couldn't get guys open and open that we couldn't get anybody open and and and, and wide open space half the time. You know. Raj, this is our guy also. We need to keep them both at all costs. I would, though. No, I Trust me, like, if they were able to keep both, that's what I would do, but I just don't think they're going to do it. Whether it's a bad take or not, it's just the truth is Devontae Smith's getting paid and AJ's probably going to walk. That's, that's the truth. That's beyond everything. Whether it's right or wrong, that's what's going to happen. AJ Brown is a fantastic player. Devontae Smith is a fantastic player. I can't wait to see what Kellen Moore how he uses both of these guys. Where we don't have one season of one half of the season of Devontae Smith and one half of the season with AJ Brown. I'm not saying that both of them have to be involved every single every single week because you got to give the ball to Saquon Barkley. You know you got to give the ball you got to give the ball to Goddard. You know Kellen Moore loves to use tight ends. You know so there's only so much. You know you only distribute the ball so much. But I think this will be a really good year where, you know, it won't be one side at wide receiver. You'll have help from A.J. and Smitty, both of them, you know, so it's great. But this is like, you know, I couldn't have I couldn't ask for a better wide receiver talent than we have right now. I mean, you I mean, they have to win the next couple years with with this wide receiver core. And I think they need to go into this draft and add another guy too. You know what I mean? Well, I'm saying if whether they're catering to what Jalen can do, I don't. I don't think they're catering to Jalen at all because if the leaks were true, like Jalen Hurts is having meetings, like there was a big disconnect between him, Brian Johnson, and Nick Sirianni. Like if Jalen Hurts went up to Nick at these meetings and says, "Hey, you know, let's try, let's start using middle of the field, let's try doing some different things to get our guys open," and Nick just put it under the rug and didn't even listen, that's what it looked like. Those were the big leaks coming out of the season at the end of the season. I mean, how are you playing the same way the last seven weeks with no no changes? Because Nick went over his head. Nick was cocky. Nick was conceited. Nick said, oh, I could do this and play the season the way he did this past year. Heart attack after heart attack games through the gauntlet. And then after the 49ers game being figured out and literally almost losing the locker room at that point, or pretty much losing the locker room at that point. With the playoff game already clinched playoffs are already clinched and still played like shit and made no adjustments and nobody that nick was close to in that offensive room couldn't even take over play calling because everybody was there was no experienced coaches with nick everybody was young everybody was just nobody could take that job Obviously, so let's just let's just guess another Super Bowl. We have them both. Uh, that's 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 all I care about. Lisa Smitty is homegrown and more of a professional with traits that will make him last longer in the NFL than AJ Brown. Look, I don't, I don't, I'm not against what AJ Brown did this past season, but it definitely put more heat on him. You know, like he went on Twitter a couple weeks ago and he said some shit. I forgot what it was, but I, I forgot he put something. On Twitter like a week ago I I, I want to go find that again He probably deleted it so I probably won't be able to find it But I know he said something like a week ago I'm surprised it didn't get any traction Um, But you're probably right You're probably right I mean Devontae Smith says I mean I never hear a word out of Devontae Smith But you know there's just guys that are more emotional AJ Brown is more of an emotional guy Like that's just What it is Um I'm it's like all of us are all, all of us are like that 
You know what I mean? I'm my personality is more AJ Brown. Like I'll like keep quiet about shit, but like if I gotta say something or if I gotta prove a point, I'll prove it in the most passive way possible. Like and AJ Brown didn't really do anything wrong. I think he just marked himself more as a target because him not talking to the media, it's a win, it's it's a lose lose situation. If he talks to the media, they're gonna twist his words. If he doesn't talk, he's gonna be aimed. Oh, why is he talking to the media? And he's selfish and he wants he wants the ball more. And he, you know, so it's it's a lose lose for him regardless. There's some fans that just don't like it. There's some fans that agree with it. Like me, like you're losing that, you know, you're 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 not your last seven games of the season, the way you're losing and not, nothing, you know, the, the head coach tries to take all the blame for the players. The players are trying to take more blame than not give all these coach the media is giving all these coaches. Like I get it. So they they have to try to help each other out some uh, some cases, but you know. So AJ is replaceable, but Reddick isn't. Reddick went nine games last season with zero sacks and zero assists. I don't see the obsession with keeping him. He went nine games last season with zero sacks. Okay, well, we're talking about a Super Bowl, bro. We're talking about a Super Bowl this year. Okay, what defensive lineman? Why does that? And here's another thing that fucking annoys me. Why does everybody just single out Hassan Reddick so fucking much? Like, what defensive lineman did anything at the end of last year? Tell me that one. Tell me that one. No one did shit last year. Who produced last year? Jordan Davis didn't do shit. Jalen Carr didn't do shit. Josh Sweat didn't have a sack since week fucking nine. You want to talk hasn't got, haven't had a sack? Josh Sweat didn't have a sack since week nine. He had a sack the last game of the season against the Giants. Since week nine, he didn't have a fucking sack. And everybody wants to attack this guy. Everybody wants to just single out Reddick for some weird reasons. It's just so fucking stupid, dude. I, I, every time I hear somebody say, well, Reddick didn't do this shit. Reddick didn't do shit at the end of the year. Who did anything at the end of the year? Fletcher Cox, Vandell Jones said it. Fletcher Cox was the only productive player. I would say more productive, which you're right. I think more productive than any defensive lineman we had last year. It's a dumb, it's a stupid, and I say stupid shit a lot, so trust me, I know, but that is just a dumb statement. I mean, seriously, seriously, like, no one could tackle, I mean, seriously, we get, fuck it, let's, let's not go defensive line, let's go to these fucking linebackers, what did they do? What did these cornerbacks do? What did these safeties do? What did these coaches do to help their players? Nothing. Nothing. To single out one guy, I mean, I mean, one guy, I mean, seriously, it takes everybody. Like, one guy in the defensive line, yeah, does it make a difference? It, it, to, a, to, to, to an extent, it does. You know? <clears throat> so... Because Reddick, because you're going for a championship, you are trying to win a Super Bowl. To make all these moves and then get rid of Reddick, because I'm I'm just saying this, like Bryce Huff is not going to have double digit sacks this year. He might, maybe, who knows? But I'm not. He's a nice added piece to somebody that is going to really excel going into a, at least one more year under his belt. So that's all I got to say about that. I mean, that's all I got to say about it. It's ridiculous. Everybody fell off. Everybody hit a wall. Every position on our defense was flawed. But to go back now and and get rid of Redick, I mean, it just makes no fucking sense to me. It It doesn't. At least let him play for the year. At least for at least two years. That that's all I'm asking. That's it. 
at his at the height of his, of Hassan's career right now, nobody is going to replace. When you're going for a Super Bowl, nobody's going to replace the productivity that he's going to get. Okay, one of our worst moves, and we thought Jalen Hargrave was the bad move, and then they drafted Jalen Carter, so it really didn't, and yes, Jalen Carter didn't replace what Hargrave did, but we know the ceiling. That's what I'm saying, like, we knew Carter wasn't going into the season, Jalen Carter was going to go into the season and replace what Hargrave did. That's the that's the problem I have, like, to replace a guy that's not going to have the same production at the height of what Reddick's career is right now, going for a Super Bowl... It's not having him here is going to be a complete fucking downgrade. Total total downgrade. If they trade him, it's what it is. If it happens, then it happens. It's not, it's not the end of the world. But then I'll have to question Howie on, okay, well, what, what happened? It might not even be Howie Roseman. It might be Reddick just being a stubborn fuck, and it might be because he wants all this money, and he deserves more money. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it at all, but 25-plus million at 30 years old, no fucking way. No way. It's not happening. <clears throat> this season defensively we're going to be we're going to be relying heavy on the young guys because it that's that's the way it goes guys are going to retire guys are going to leave this is the year where we're going to be relying on Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter and and Nolan Smith and Kobe Dean and a lot of these young guys Okay, to be the nucleus centerpiece of what we're building around. I saw a lot of video yesterday. Jordan Davis, I forgot who, Jordan Davis and Milton Williams were working out like crazy yesterday. So Jordan Davis knows he, this, this is an important year, no doubt. Am I worried about it? Not really, because I feel like he showed a lot and then kind of fell off. Like, it's just... You know the way we're winning, the way we're losing. It just, it just didn't add up, and I felt like everybody, everybody hit a wall at that point. Yeah, I, I agree. After the Bills game, I agree. After the Bills game, I didn't. Jordan Davis kind of disappeared. I, I agree with that. I agree with it. After that, kind of was gone. After that. So. When he got when Jordan Davis got drafted, I said, "Look, like as as long as they can keep control of his weight, you know, he's got a good support system in Philadelphia. You know, he's got playing with guys. You know, so at at that time, you know, it was only him and one other person. Um, but I said, you know, they have to control his. You know, as long as he doesn't go crazy with his weight, they have to. You know, if he gets overweight, loses explosiveness, he's he's not going to work out in Philadelphia. He'll be a total bust." I don't think he's a bust yet. I think there's a lot more to prove. I think he showed a lot. Um, but I'm not going to just be negative and say it's not going to work out. Like, I'm going to enjoy it and see what he does. Like, bro, he sucks, man. He ain't going to do shit. Like, I can't, I can't, I can't fucking stand guys that are like that. Because I bet, I bet you 100% those people were fucking excited when they drafted him. Bet you they did. Now that now, now everybody is a Mr. Fucking Know-It-All now when it comes to these fucking players. I can't stand when people try to be the smartest guy in the room. Fucking annoys me. I deal with that shit on a regular basis. I hate people that are like that. It's so annoying. They said Jordan Davis is fine. He played great again. He ain't gonna carry on Dan Cilio flag, guys. I think when it comes to it too, like, you know, there are a lot of lot of lot of plays where, you know, he was either getting double teamed. There was a lot of plays where we really saw like he actually had a pass rush. I didn't expect even this past year to even him have a pass rush. But man, I was like, holy shit, dude. Like, this guy is like getting 
He's getting pressures. I mean, I was expecting him to be like a great run stuffer, but man, the the combination. I was really, uh, I was really impressed. You know, so just give it time, man. I think going back to his original position that nose is really going to help him out a lot tremendously. Um, I think he's hard, especially on the you know, depending on how they're going to block him, depending on how what they're going to do, and it really depends what Fangio does with these linebackers, these outside, you know, obviously with the you know the outside edge rush, you know, depending what he does, you know, it's 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 going to be interesting. It's going to be a crazy crazy season. You were comparing Reddick to young players and old players. Reddick is in his prime and fell apart. What? What? Tell me how he fell apart. <laughs> like this is like, do you guys write a fucking journal every day about this shit? Like seriously. Like, what was I watching last year? Were we watching the same season last year, or are you know what I mean? Did Reddick? Did Reddick kill the whole season last year? Is it Reddick's fault the defense didn't work out last year? Is it Reddick's fault that Sean Desai got demoted? Is it Reddick's fault that Matt Patricia just didn't know how to use players? Is it Reddick's fault that he was put in coverage so much in a bad system last year? I mean, seriously. Seriously. Tell tell me how he fell up he fell apart, quote unquote. Why are we talking about Cilio? Um, go on, Jerome. And that's and that's fine. I I know I, I Kyle Hamilton. Yeah, a lot of people want Kyle Hamilton. I, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. <laughs> The only the only time I tune into Dan Cilio, like, and I don't agree with anything he says, but the only time I don't, I, the only reason why I run to Dan Cilio's videos is because I followed your key, but not even that. But I have a lot of people that I follow that put up his put up his, you know, they they post his stuff online as well. So I, I don't even follow it. I just run into it. Most of the time, and I run to like the specific clips on certain you know segments that are taken um in there, you know I think the fa I think the eagle fan base has gone fucking nuts I, I honestly do i think they I think they listen to way too many fucking people on I think they listen to way i think I think they listen to way too many fucking people, news outlets, and I think it's just crazy. At the end of the day, I report what I report on what the news is. I give my opinion on it, and that's it. I could be right. I could be wrong. Whatever. Hello. Oh, I said, hey, let's get Saquon Barkley. Me and Philly were talking about that on the phone, off camera. Like, hey, you know, what if we get Saquon Barkley? Man, God, that would be such an outside the box move. I said, I know, right? I mean, I would love that, and I wouldn't mind Saquon here at all. People were asking me weeks before free agency, like, would you like Saquon? I said, yeah, I wouldn't mind it. I, I think it would be great. I mean, it would be interesting to see what he would do in Philadelphia. It probably wouldn't happen, though, you know. And then it happens, and then. You know, when I'm wrong, people will let me know that I'm wrong. When I'm right, people won't say a fucking word about it at all. You know what I mean? That's what it is. Same thing. Same thing with... Let me tell you something. Like, the same thing that happened with... Uh, I have to I have to go with my gut on things. I can't, like, pray and hope because I feel like every time I do that, it just it's a disaster. By that moment. Uh, see, Silly was a clown. Anyone that actually listened to him is easily swayed. Rogers has, hit, has Isaiah Rogers have been reading. I don't think he has yet. No. I don't, Rob, I don't think he has. 
Uh, Joe says, Sills is a troll and a hater. I don't pay attention to him. Uh, as Val says, hey, Joey, I also think there may have been a fight of some sort or may have been helped to contribute to the collapse that we won't hear about until a few years later. I mean, definitely something but happened behind the scenes. I believe the Eagles, the players went up, especially A.J. Brown and players went up to the coaching staff to change things, make adjustments. They didn't, and they did as much as they could behind the scenes or at least in front of the media to not make – push this issue to be even further and I, and I think that's what happened I've told you Joey hell no uh, Joseph says Reddick has had better year than half the defense I wouldn't let him walk if Reddick had one sack this past year then sure like I think everybody would want him out the building and I don't know so, a lot of people have this a lot of people have this like you know, love affair with hating on Reddick and not let, having him be here for some weird reason. Like you're going for a Super Bowl this year, and you're thinking Reddick doesn't make a difference to your defensive line. Okay, sure, Brandon Graham will get all those sacks for you. Sure, Brandon Graham will be really nice for us this year because Graham ain't gonna do nothing but be a rotational guy. So, and Josh Wett's here for one more year. That's it. And Sweat always played, you know, Sweat had a down year last year. So, you know, not his fault, but, you know, everybody had a down year last year. Everybody hit a wall last year. So I'm saying, like, I'm understanding of the whole situation. Like, I can look at a player and say, oh, man, what did he do at the end of last year? Like, it's just, what did anybody do at the end of last year? It's, it's, it's not even... Joe said you can't replace Reddick production every year. Reddick has double. It's not even. It's not even literally about double. It's not even really about the sacks. Like it is, but it isn't. But Reddick is a closer. Reddick is streaky. So if anybody knows about Hassan Reddick and how he plays, yes, he's very streaky. One month he'll have zero sacks. Another month he'll have like fucking seven. Like that's just how he plays. That's just. That's just how it is. Okay. That's that's what happens all the time. He's very streaky when it comes to his production, and, but it, it always works out. How many times did how many times did he close out so many games when we needed that pass rush at the end of the game to make those stops during the gauntlet? How many times did he make plays in the backfield this year? Plenty of games. Plenty of games. So it is what it is. It is what it is. You guys, you, you'll find out if they trade Reddick, y'all going to find out real quick, real fucking quick. I'm just going to sit and wait. That's all I'm going to do. I'm going to sit and wait. And people are like, oh, he sucks. He can't do shit. He didn't do it at the end of last year. He sucks against the run. You guys will find out. You guys are going to find out soon enough. You guys are going to find out soon enough. Just, just saying. What was true, Chad? Thank you so much, man. It's 11 6 playoffs. Talent was there. Coaching was asked. Players were a part of the problem. Uh, but common at coaching, and I bet the season is way different. Yes, 100% it would have been different. I, there's no doubt about it. Tired of hearing that shit. You know, I respect everybody's opinion. I get it. I can't tell if people are just trolling or people like are actually like giving their points because I, I mean I hear the same shit. Why is he just good against the run? Why is he so what's what's wrong? I mean, numbers are numbers at the end of the day. Like what's what's that's what I'm getting. So every every play, you know, I mean it's it, it involves everybody on the defensive line. It's not just one guy, it's everybody. If one guy, if Reddick is doing his job and no one else is doing their job, it's going to be a successful play by the offense. But it involves everybody. It's not just Reddick, it's everybody. Look, look what, I mean, seriously, look what Reddick did, like, even when we went to the playoffs. Seriously. 
22 the playoffs look what reddick did in the playoffs seriously it's no one complained that year nobody complained nobody complained because we went to a super bowl and lost nobody complained about him that year of course not but this year because we've collapsed the last seven games of the season now he sucks now he's got no talent now he's he's off the panhandle now Appreciate the super, by the way. What? I'm telling you. We got 294 in the chat. Thank you so much for joining. If you guys haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. Like the stream. Check the pinned comment for extra content and uh, support as well uh, for more um, for more content coming out. We've been putting out content every day, so... I thank everybody so much for joining up today. Um, the last thing I want to be is pissed off before anything happens. Because I guarantee you, Reddit gets re-signed, and people are going to be pissed off at it. J.J. Irvin. Nobody couldn't stop nothing. Worst defense I ever seen, but it's all Hassan Reddick. <laughs> you know, like, don't get he didn't do nothing. Like, <laughs> you know, it's just like, does Josh Wett make a play every single play? No. Does, J does Hassan Reddick make a play every play? Did Jordan Davis, Jalen Carter? I mean, Jalen Carter was the rotation. There was a couple games, Jalen Carter, at the end of the year. Jalen Carter only had 21 snaps a game. Like, what? Why is he getting 21 snaps? It's It's crazy. Tyler Dodge, she said, people are saying Reddit can't play the run, didn't watch the dog. But but this, dude, this is what I'm saying, though. Like, people that say that or just say it because they hear about it. Like, that's, those people just say it because they hear about it. And they just copy off of what somebody says. That's it. That's all it is. You get paid. You don't get paid as an edge rusher to stop the run. You get paid as an e edge rusher to get to the quarterback and strip the fucking football. That's what you get paid as an edge rusher to do. That's how it goes. Simple as that. <laughs> Pretty soon Eagles fans will be calling jail on a running back. <laughs> Trade Reddick for a third and swap seconds with the card picks with the Cardinals. The only the only issue I have with that is I don't want to swap picks. I want to get their pick. I'm not swapping nothing. Because I'm sorry, Reddick has too much value. As the reports say. You know, because I read something, okay? So let me just say what was read. The reports say that the league values Reddick, no doubt. There is a lot of value when it comes to Hassan Reddick. So that's that's how that goes. Okay. I'm not looking for a pick swap. I'm looking for Tay. I'm, I'm, he's got way too much value for me to just pick swap with somebody. I'm taking that number 35, and I'm saying it's mine, and that's it. Simple as that. I mean, we want to talk about Hassan Reddick. What about James Bradbury? No, I mean, how is nobody? How is nobody? Okay, how is nobody saying anything about James Bradbury? James Bradbury over Reddick? I mean, seriously? They haven't even cut Bradbury, extended him, cut him, spread out the dead cap. They haven't even put him on a post-June designation cut yet. It and no, that's wrong. That's wrong. You you got oh God. I mean, I obviously know people don't don't know anything. Because we know Bradbury contract is impossible. That's that's not true. 
a post June cut is 10 million in dead cap, but you have to extend Reddick two years. You extend Reddick. Seth Joyner said this shit after one of our fucking games at the end of the year. And then I looked at it and I said, yes, it does make sense. If you extend Bradbury's contract two years on a post-June designation cut, you split that up to $5 million a year, you eat $5 million up, and single-digit dead money is easy to eat up. It's not hard to eat that up. It's not a hard contract to get out of. It's impossible to get out of. I, it's just, who, who, who says it's impossible to get out of? <laughs> Seriously. People just don't know anything. I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but when you actually go online and you go actually on the sites and look at the contracts and look at what the numbers look like and say, hey, this is how you can cut Bradbury. It's not impossible. It's $10 million in dead cap. You split it up with a two-year extension, and boom, it's done. $5 million a year in dead cap is nothing. The Eagles eat that up like it's nothing. It's not a big contract. But, you know... When his piece of Reddick outplayed his contract, of course he deserved it. I, he does. He deserves more money. I'm not. I'm not saying he doesn't deserve more money at all. Since you're signed a three-year, three million contract with the Eagles, twenty million guarantees. Bradbury's twenty percent of our base salaries are fully guaranteed, and will receive seven. 0.685 bonus but what's the dead cap though like that's what i'm saying yeah it's a three-year 38 million dollar deal but the in it's it's incentive based and there's dead cap involved on a on a, on a cut for 10 million after Ju if it's a post june cut it's more money if they cut him now it's more dead cap it's like 15 million dollars if they cut him after june it's it goes down to 10 but if you extend his contract you lessen that dead cap hit you spread out that money with a couple years well you ex no you're extending bradbury to you're literally extending bradbury a couple years to you know to get rid of him and Help the Eagles by separating that dead cap for a few years, so the cap, so the dead cap isn't big in one year. But I don't know. I've heard that one over and over again. It's impossible to get rid of Bradbury's contract. It's I've heard that a million times too. All all fucking off season. All off season. He's and, he, and you know what? They could keep him this year and fucking just bench him. If they want to draft a corner this year, they can. But they would just have to bench him the whole year because his cap number for this year is really cheap. It's only four million. It's not expensive. Eric Sears to Joey, do you think the Eagles are getting rid of Reddick trying uh trying to have more free money just to sign Justin Simmons? No, the Eagles have cap space to sign Justin Simmons. I would at this point, Justin Simmons has got to lower his price, whatever it is, because it's been absolutely quiet for days. It's been quiet. You're not holding on to a specific number for this long. It's definitely gotta go down sooner or later. Um you're not trying to get rid of Reddick to I mean getting rid of Reddick frees up money, sure, but like I think they have money to sign Simmons. It's just Simmons at the end of the day just making a decision. There's been no there's been no news on what Simmons wants or what it's go what's going on. You know, another thing, you know, Simmons wants 16 million a year, which I don't know where that came from. I'm telling you, like, there's just these random shits I've been hearing nonstop about price. Um just stupid man it's like jay says the sirianni wasn't in the annual co coaches for like the league meetings because he's not in that group chat <laughs> what <laughs> i 
Joe said, when we need to stop, Reddit gets it done. That is true. I wish I could make people realize, but... I think Simmons, the Eagles, are waiting on the Reddick move. Maybe, but I doubt it. Nate Brand says, we sign and release Wentz contract, how I could do it. Yeah, I mean, the Eagles ate up a lot of money, dude. That was a contract that was, that was a bad contract. That was a bad contract that we had to eat up. That was a bad deal. That was a bad, you know, a bad move. But they had no choice. So I'm saying, like, 10, 50, you know, 10... $10 million split up post-June, it's it's a joke. It's it's a complete joke. It's easy to eat up. It's not it's not impossible. I mean, Howie's not sitting there like, oh man, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. I mean, I mean he's not he's not doing that. I was say when Reddick was rushing, we were winning. When he started to be dropping back, we started losing. Yeah, and, and obviously, yeah, I think that's 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 definitely big too. Um that's definitely big as well, um, you know, because he, he, you know, when you're when you're not rushing with him, it's definitely a loss for the defensive line, no doubt. You know, especially Matt Patricia was putting, you know, Matt Patricia was like putting, you know, Hassan Reddick in coverage, you know, twenty seven to thirty percent of the time, which didn't help at all. Um, so I guess we're gonna find out. We're gonna see. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna find out. Enzo says Bryce Huff will outplay his contract. We don't need Reddick. Here's what here's what I don't get. I think I agree with you. I think he will. That contract will be cheap by next. I would say not this season. I would say by next season, as he plays now. I think he'll have a. I think I you know not. I don't think he's gonna get double digit sacks this season. Whatever. You know. Here's the thing. Like everybody's so happy about Bryce Huff. But Bryce Huff barely, Bryce Huff, and look, I, I'm just saying the facts. Bryce Huff played 43% of the snaps this year. Bryce Huff didn't, Bryce Huff didn't get much playing time this year and had crazy stats. Okay? 40, what was it, 45, 43, 45, whatever it was. Okay, even, even better to make my point. Okay, 45% of the snaps not even a pure starter and like had <laughs> had 10 10 sacks for the year only year he's had double digit sacks and they paid him a good amount of money for it you know um <laughs> but nobody wants to sign reddick yeah you know what i mean like that's what i'm saying like i'm happy about the bryce huff sign because you know they have to say hey can you play a full season can you play a full season and 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 God God knows he'll probably do better than that. Bryce Huff is a top three player the last three years in pressure rate, win rate. Nine out of ten times he beats his man one on one. Not even just making the play, but in win rate percentage is beating your man one on one throughout the year, and he's almost nine out of ten times doing it all the time. The last three years. So that's what I got to say about that. Yo, House Cat, what's going on, man? Welcome to the camera tier, my friend. New member. Make sure you get all the extra content. Thank you for the support, man. Thank you so much for joining the camera tier so much, dude. Thank you so much, House Cat. Thank you, thank you. Shows that Huff is better than Reddick. The knock on Huff is that he too can't play the run. That's <laughs> he can't. He's an he's another guy. Yes, he's another guy. But that's not why you pay. Like that's why these guys. Like no, I don't think people understand. Like you don't you don't pay edge rushers to fucking go to play against the run. Like I don't I don't get that shit. I don't get it. I 
I don't get it, man. Tyler said, Huff said he wanted to play and learn from Redick as well, which I totally forgot he said that. And yeah, he did say that, you know, so he's looked up to him. So, I mean, look, you know, if the, the more quietness happens every day with this Redick situation, the more likely he will be back. And I really hope he is back. And Allison says, whatever we get draft-wise will not live up to Reddick. I'm not saying that a player can't get to Reddick's... I'm not saying a player can't live up to Reddick later in his career and maybe be that productive. But I'm saying as of right now for this year, a round one edge rusher is not going to produce that, what Reddick is producing. Simple as that. That's not true, Ho. Huff is way better against the run. Then give me a stat, then. Then give me a stat. Give me a stat. Don't just tell me he is. Give me a statistic. Like, like just telling me he's better isn't, isn't, that's, that's, what, what am I supposed to do with that? What am I supposed to do with that? I don't know. But you know what? What I think for myself is all I care about. So that is it. I respect everybody's opinions, but um, that's all I care about. I want him back. I think it's going to be a big mistake if he's gone. I think we're going to see a difference. Unless they load up in the secondary and the coverage is so good. And it's so good. This off-ball coverage is so perfect and so good that we're going to get coverage sacks nonstop this year. All I'm going to say. It's all I'm going to say. So how long have we been on here? Um... So we've been on stream for almost two hours. We're going to do a short one today because I have some more content I need to put out later on. And um, we'll most likely be streaming tomorrow, probably early tomorrow. And uh, we'll get some stuff done. Um, it's already like 6 o'clock, so past 6 o'clock now. So um, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Um, if you guys haven't liked the stream, please like the stream. Appreciate the super chats. Appreciate the memberships, all that great stuff today. Um, and uh, we'll talk more tomorrow, you know, until <laughs> something something happens, you know. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Jack says, I want Rhett Reddick gone for draft capital and cap. Well, whether the Eagles keep him or trade them, they're getting eleven plus million dollars. So you're going to have cap relief regardless. And who's promising the Eagles are getting a second round pick? Lajarius Sneed got traded for a 25 third rounder, a 25 third rounder, and you got to pay him. You know what I mean? So a team had to give up a 25 third rounder, not even a hundred. So Kansas City didn't really, you know, I guess, you know, not, you know, seriously. I mean. A draft pick for next year. At this point, you know, Brian Burns is what, 26, 27, and the Eagles give up, I'm sorry, and the Giants give up a second round and then some at a younger age, less statistics than Reddick, and gets a second round pick. What do you think the Eagles are going to get in return for Reddick right now? They're not going to be able to move them because they're not going to get the right draft compensation coming back. I would be shocked if they get a second round pick for him at this point. Shocked. And, you know. So... I guess it comes down to age. I guess that's what they give a shit about, not productivity for the for a year or two. So that's where it goes. 
All right, guys, you guys have a fantastic day. Make sure you like the stream. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll have more videos out tomorrow. You guys enjoy the rest of your day, and uh, we'll, I guess, continue this tomorrow. Yeah. You guys enjoy. We'll see you in the next one. Peace out.